The Earth is heating up, and it's no longer a matter of debate. The signs are all around us. Rising sea levels, record-breaking heat waves, catastrophic wildfires, prolonged droughts, and intensifying storms have become annual headlines. The world's leading climate scientists have issued warnings year after year, backed by extensive data and research, and yet global emissions continue to rise. Despite international agreements, pledges, and climate summits, real and lasting progress remains elusive. The question is no longer whether we can reverse global warming entirely. It's whether we can avoid its worst consequences. But what if countries fail to stop global warming altogether? What if humanity crosses irreversible thresholds and plunges into a future where climate chaos becomes the new normal? The consequences of inaction are not distant. They are immediate, devastating, and deeply unfair. Because while global warming affects everyone, it does not do so equally. The world's most vulnerable nations are often the ones that have contributed the least to the problem, yet suffer the most from its impacts. Let's begin by visualizing a world where the average global temperature rises by more than 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels a threshold that scientists say would lead to catastrophic and potentially irreversible damage. At this point, polar ice sheets melt at an accelerated rate, contributing to rapidly rising sea levels. Coastal cities across the globe, New York, Miami, Jakarta, Mumbai, Lagos, Bangkok, and Amsterdam face chronic flooding. Some low-lying island nations like the Maldives, Tuvalu, and Kiribati could become completely uninhabitable or disappear beneath the waves altogether. In these places, homes are swallowed, freshwater becomes saline, and livelihoods, often tied to fishing and tourism, vanish. But it's not just about coastlines. Inland areas are not spared. As temperatures rise, droughts become more frequent and intense. Crops wither, harvests fail, and food insecurity skyrockets. Regions like Sub-Saharan Africa, already grappling with poverty, will face worsening famine and water shortages. The Sahel region, stretching across Africa just south of the Sahara, is already experiencing these changes. As the land becomes less arable, millions will be forced to migrate in search of food, water, and safety. This mass migration could trigger geopolitical tensions, border disputes, and internal conflict in receiving countries ill-prepared to absorb such influxes. In South Asia, Rising temperatures combined with high humidity could create lethal heat conditions. Major cities like Delhi, Karachi, and Dhaka could experience days when simply stepping outside becomes life-threatening for the elderly, the poor, and those without access to air conditioning. Hundreds of millions may face chronic heat stress, increasing the risk of heat stroke, dehydration, and cardiovascular disease. Health systems, already under strain, would collapse under the weight of climate-induced illness and suffering. Meanwhile, the Arctic, often seen as a distant wilderness, becomes a crucial tipping point. As permafrost thaws, it releases massive amounts of methane, a potent greenhouse gas, further accelerating warming in a dangerous feedback loop. Wildlife dependent on cold habitats, such as polar bears, walruses, and reindeer, begin to vanish. Indigenous communities that have lived sustainably in these regions for centuries are displaced or forced to abandon traditional ways of life. Climate refugees, a term once confined to speculative fiction, become a grim reality. The United Nations estimates that by 2050, up to 1.2 billion people could be displaced due to climate-related disasters if we fail to act decisively. And what happens to the global economy? The consequences are profound and far-reaching. Infrastructure crumbles under the weight of climate stress. Roads crack from excessive heat, rail lines warp, and power grids fail under soaring demand for air conditioning. Insurance companies either collapse under massive claims or refuse to insure high-risk areas altogether. Real estate values plummet in vulnerable zones. The global supply chain, already shaken by pandemics and geopolitical conflict, is disrupted further by climate shocks. Ports are inundated, farmlands are parched, transportation is hampered. As economic activity contracts, unemployment rises, inequality deepens. The poor spend more on basic necessities like food, water, and shelter 
While the wealthy retreat to climate-controlled bubbles of safety, deepening resentment, and social division, biodiversity faces one of its greatest threats. Coral reefs, essential to marine life and coastal protection, die off in bleaching events triggered by warming oceans. Entire ecosystems collapse, insects critical to pollination decline, threatening food security. Forests, natural carbon sinks, are consumed by fires or die from pest infestations. The Amazon, long considered the lungs of the earth, could transform from a rainforest into a savanna, releasing vast amounts of carbon rather than absorbing it. The result is a runaway chain of destruction that we are unable to control. The harshest reality is that those most affected are those least responsible. Developed nations, industrial giants with long histories of greenhouse gas emissions, have the resources to adapt, even if inadequately. But the global south, nations in Africa, Asia, and Latin America, often lacks the economic and technological means to respond. Small island states, landlocked developing countries, and poor coastal regions are disproportionately impacted. In these areas, a single climate event, a cyclone, a flood, a drought, can erase decades of development. Schools are destroyed, hospitals are rendered useless, and entire communities are thrown into poverty. Climate justice becomes the most urgent moral issue of our time. Consider Bangladesh, a country with a population exceeding 160 million people and one of the lowest carbon footprints per capita in the world. With much of its land barely above sea level, rising tides and heavier monsoons pose existential threats. The capital city of Dhaka is already under strain from internal migration caused by river erosion and crop failure. The sea is rising, but so is the desperation. Bangladesh cannot afford to build massive seawalls like the Netherlands or relocate millions to safer regions, and it is not alone. The Pacific Islands face a similarly grim future. These nations like Fiji, the Marshall Islands, and Vanuatu are already seeing their coastlines erode and freshwater sources contaminated. Their economies are tied to tourism and agriculture, both deeply vulnerable to climate impacts. Unlike wealthier nations, they have limited bargaining power on the international stage. Their very existence depends on the actions of larger, more powerful countries whose policies continue to prioritize economic growth over ecological survival. In Latin America, countries like Guatemala and Honduras face worsening droughts in the so-called dry corridor. These environmental stresses compound existing problems of poverty, violence, and weak governance driving thousands to migrate northward, seeking safety and opportunity. Climate change thus becomes a root cause of mass migration, challenging international systems that are unprepared to deal with such large-scale human movement. It is a crisis not of the future, but of now. In the Middle East and North Africa, water scarcity becomes a trigger for conflict. The Tigris and Euphrates rivers, lifelines for Iraq and Syria, are drying up. Yemen, already devastated by war, sees its last aquifers depleted. Climate-induced resource scarcity fans, the flames of existing tensions. Civil unrest, extremism, and state failure become more likely in environments where people are forced to compete for food and water. The climate security nexus becomes one of the most pressing challenges for global peace. Even nations seen as more resilient are not immune. The United States, for instance, faces increased frequency and intensity of hurricanes along the Gulf and East Coast. Wildfires ravage the West. Infrastructure buckles under heat waves and floods. Agricultural heartlands in the Midwest suffer from both droughts and extreme rainfall. The economic cost runs into hundreds of billions annually and the social cost is incalculable. Displacement, property loss, health impacts, and psychological trauma take their toll. Climate denialism wanes, but so does the hope that mitigation alone can suffice. Europe, too, is on the front lines. The Mediterranean region faces desertification. Glaciers in the Alps disappear. Floods in Germany, heat waves in France, and fires in Greece highlight that even wealthy, developed nations are vulnerable. Climate refugees arrive from Africa and the Middle East, placing strain on social systems and fueling xenophobic political movements. Solidarity phrase, 
The European Union's unity is tested not just by economic crises, but by environmental collapse. The geopolitical consequences are enormous. Nations fight over dwindling water sources, <laughs> arable land, and habitable territory. Arctic melting opens up new shipping routes and access to previously untapped oil and gas, sparking competition among major powers. Climate becomes a national security issue, with militaries preparing for missions to stabilize regions hit by extreme weather or famine. Cybersecurity is challenged as governments come under attack from climate disinformation campaigns designed to delay action. The era of climate wars may not be far off. And yet, amid this bleak picture, the most profound consequence may be existential. Humanity is forced to confront the consequences of its own behavior. We realize too late that growth without limits, consumption without regard, and denial without responsibility lead to collapse. Entire generations grow up under the shadow of climate trauma. Children see beaches they can no longer swim in, forests they can no longer walk through, animals they can only see in documentaries. They inherit a planet diminished, its beauty scarred by greed and inaction. But the story does not have to end this way. The failure to stop global warming is not inevitable. The world has the knowledge, the technology, and even the resources to pivot toward a sustainable future. What it lacks is the collective political will. Renewable energy, sustainable agriculture, reforestation, carbon capture, and resilient infrastructure are all achievable. What is required is urgent, coordinated, and bold action. It requires that we move beyond short-term thinking, beyond profit-driven policy, and embrace a long-term vision for humanity. It also requires a radical rethinking of values. We must shift from an economy of extraction to an economy of regeneration, from competition to cooperation, from individualism to community, from exploitation to stewardship. The planet is not a resource, it is a relationship. And like any relationship, it requires care, respect, and reciprocity. Climate change is the defining challenge of our time. It is not just an environmental issue, it is a humanitarian, economic, and moral crisis. The future is being written today by every decision we make, every policy we pass, every dollar we spend. If countries continue to fail to act, the consequences will be devastating and unjust. But if we rise to meet the challenge, if we choose courage over convenience, then we can build a world that is not just livable, but thriving. The stakes could not be higher. The time for debate is over. The time for action is now. Because if we fail to stop global warming, it won't just be the planet that suffers, it will be all of us, especially those who can least afford it. And history will not forgive our silence.